the future of one of the world's biggest sports clubs is in doubt this morning. The British government has placed sanctions on the billionaire owner of Chelsea Football Club, Roman Abramovich, and this is due to his alleged connection to the Russian president. On 10th March 2022, the UK government announced its decision to sanction Russian oligarch Roman Abramovich due to his alleged relation with the Kremlin in the current political scenario. Interestingly, this included his most luxurious and valued assist, Chelsea FC, which he eventually decided to sell just eight days before. Though a special license was issued as the government sees the club as cultural assets, but the question remains, is that enough? As the club is still in the race in all three major competitions, it is playing and is ranked 8th most valuable in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the center back. Today, we will talk about Roman Abramovich's legacy at Stamford Bridge and what future lies ahead of Chelsea FC. But before going into all these details, Let's get it sorted that Chelsea indeed had a history before Roman brought the club in 2003. The club was established in 1905 by Henry Augustus Mears and owned the English Football League in 1955-56 season. Their first European success came in 1971 when they owned the Cup Winners' Cup a year after their famous FA Cup win in 1970. But in the late 70s, the club started declining. Continuous financial crisis and hooligan activities among fan groups throughout the decade resulted in multiple relegations in 1975-1978. In 1982, Kane Bates bought the club for just one pound, brought them into the top division and handed the ownership of Stamford Bridge to the Chelsea Pitch Owners Association. He also developed the Stamford Bridge into a world-class facility of today. But as the date went nearly 90 million in 2003, it was getting difficult for the club to repay installments. So, in 2003, Kenbet sold the club to Roman Abramovich. The rest is history. Since then, Roman has invested 1.5 billion into the club. In his first season, he splashed a total of 121.3 million pounds and Chelsea finished second to none other than the invincible Arsenal. Despite this, the Russian was not satisfied and brought in Jose Mourinho. Amid all the criticism, it proved to be fruitful as the special one delivered back-to-back -back Premier League titles. This started the most successful period in the Blues history as after 19 years of his takeover, Chelsea have won more titles than any other English team. Despite always being at the receiving end of criticisms for his alleged Marseillaise sports washing project, which he of course denied several times and let his success do the talking. Chelsea's 2.2 billion gross transfer spend under him puts them on the pole position ahead of Man City, Man United and Liverpool. This just shows how he transformed a financially straight club into one of the best in the world by bankrolling blockbuster transfers. But continued diplomatic tension between UK and Russia was making it difficult for Abramovich resulting in his absence from the stands since 2018 as his UK investor visa was allegedly denied. But the recent geopolitical events made it impossible for him to continue. He still tried to salvage some damage by handing the club to the trustees, which didn't work. Few days later, he announced his decision to sell the club and write off all the loans to the club and committed to use all the net proceeds of the sale to all the victims of the war in Ukraine. But now, the club is now effectively under the control of UK government after sanctions were imposed on 11th March. The club is now operating under a special government license under which it can continue to pay salaries, allowances and pensions and receive money from other clubs for an existing loan or player sale arrangements. It can also continue to collect television revenue and performance fees. Season ticket holders can also attend the matches. But in a major hit for the club, no new player sales or purchases will be allowed under the current license. 
Furthermore, negotiations with players whose contracts are coming to an end this season must be put on hold. This includes the like of Cesar Azpilicueta, Andreas Christensen, among others. Another major setback is that the travel cost of away games has been limited to a maximum of £20,000. But the good news is, Reine Group, the New York investment bank running the sale of Chelsea on behalf of Roman Abramovich, has received almost 10 to 12 bids and plans to narrow down the shortlist of bidders to just three. But who are they? A consortium of Todd Bully, backed by Swiss billionaire Hans Jörg Weiss and Jonathan Goldstein, Clear Lake Capitals, which has roughly 60 billion USD of assets, are the most favoured at the moment. They have also added Daniel Finkley Strain and Times columnist Barbara Sharon to the team as non-executives if they are to win the bid. London-based investment asset bank Centricus Asset Management, which oversees 38 billion USD in assets, has made what may be the richest bid for the team with a reported fee of 4 billion USD partnered with Jolathan Lowry and Bob Finch on the board. Their co-founder Nijar Al-Bassam and CEO Garth Ritchie are reported to be season ticket holders. British property developer Nick Candy submitted a bid of over £2 billion to Rain on Friday, but later increased his offer significantly after being backed by HANA Financial Group and CNP Sports Limited of South Korea. The bid is also said to be sourced from credible co-ventures whose attitude towards government is top-rated. Former Liverpool chairman Sir Martin Broughton and World Athletic President Sebastian Coe backed by Sacramento Kings owner Indian American Vivek Randeep have also submitted their bids. Report from British media emerged that other significant bidders are Chicago club's owner Ricket family, Saudi media headed by Mohammad Al Khereji. Hopefully, till the time we publish this video, a preferred buyer or buyers will be submitted to the government who must issue a special license for any sale and requires evidence that Avramovich will not make any financial gain. From there, it will be up to the respective buyer to pass the Premier League's owners and director stage before completing a takeover, which could take a month. Thanks for joining the Center Bank.